On this episode of Doing the Most, we are talking about bench trialing. Comment bros and various items, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. So, I have here with me Will, aka Hello. Chef from the internets. The discords and the reddits. Yes, and you you are, as far as I know, the most well equipped to lead a conversation <laughs> on bench trialing. Yeah, I love bench trials. It's it's like my, my, my favorite part of, you know, the brewing process. I hate bottling. I've got 40 gallons of mead in carboys that is all love, you know, well balanced and all that kind of stuff. Ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> But bottling. Bottling is the worst. It's the worst. Like like every aspect of it, honestly, <laughs> is the worst. I don't really do much bench trialing. I might do bench trialing to taste out different sweetness levels or acids, but not really in any organized kind Systematic of way. way. So basically, you know, let's start with what is a bench trial, right? Uh, a bench trial is a way to systematically decide how to balance your meat, right? Rather than having to guess or doing your usual process of eating some in and tasting and then eating some more in, yeah. right? It, it gives you a way to sort of systematically determine, okay, I need to add X amount to my meat in order to achieve the flavor profile that I want, mm -hmm. right? So you can do bench trials to determine how much tannin you want to add. You can do bench trials to determine how much acid you want to add. You can do bench trials to determine how much sweetness you want to add, how much honey or how much erythritol, mm -hmm. right? And so the way that we do this is we mix up solutions that contain a known amount of the acid or the tannin or the honey or whatever you're doing. We take samples of the meat um, of known volumes and we add known volumes to several different samples and we pick our favorites. Okay. Right? Uh, so we're going to be in a minute mixing up a few stock solutions, right? Which is we're going to make uh, 100 milliliters that have for the tannins um, one percent of that solution is going to be the tannin. Uh, for the acids, I like to use 10% solutions. Okay. Okay. We're going to take one of these meads that needs balancing. Uh -huh. I think uh, one of them is yours, yep. uh, and one of them comes from uh, Corey Costello, uh, who uh, you know you may know from the Reddits and the Mead uh -huh. Hall, who's an incredibly talented mead maker. Uh, yes. Uh, but he pulled off a sample of a Balaton mead out of the fermenter for me. Oh, great. <laughs> before he'd had a chance to balance it, and it is way too sweet and needs some tannins so okay we'll, we'll we'll pick one of those things but bench trials are fun um and you know for a lot of you know, for, for a lot of mead makers it's a great way to get your your significant other or your friends who may not mm. be brewers mm -hmm. involved in your hobby because you want more people tasting you want more opinions you don't necessarily want to rely on your palate and so you know i bring my wife in all the time and i say pick your favorite and so she'll tell me i like this one I like this one. Then maybe we'll, we'll mix those and we'll decide, do we uh, like okay. one of those better, yeah. right? So it's a great way to get friends and family involved and share with them in the brewing process and you know, sort of get them involved. To make these stock solutions, we're going to need a couple pieces of equipment. Uh, most mead makers should have a graduated cylinder. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to measure probably at least 100 milliliters. Um, we are going to need some distilled water. Right. Um, I think it's important to use distilled water because it is completely neutral. But if your home water is doesn't have strong flavors, you can use that as well. You know, I think distilled water is a great thing to have on hand. I have five gallons on hand at all times. Um, now you can make these stock solutions with just distilled water. That's fine. Uh, the only problem is, is they won't be shelf stable, right? Got it. So you'll come back a few days later or a couple weeks later, and you're going to have weird, gross, floaty things in there don't want to be doing that I think I, I remember when I first started doing this I used only water it's just like gross <laughs> uh, so I did a lot of um, uh, you know research and found out how Scott Labs does it and you know ah, it turns out that okay. they make a um, theirs are 10 to 15 percent alcohol and that provides some microbial stability so we're going to use a good vodka that doesn't have strong flavor so I wouldn't recommend going and buying a bottle of Taka for this but, yeah you know <laughs> some Burton's blueberry <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but you know good neutral vodka uh, and we're gonna make these about 
20-ish percent alcohol okay. uh, so that um, you know you can have them around for a while I've got some that I've had for about a year I make new ones after about a year but you know they're still fine we're gonna need a subgram scale I hope all of you have it you have should it. you should they're like seven bucks on Amazon these I know days. it's crazy first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open this vodka and a couple shots or oh, sure we can <laughs> it'll make this more fun blow yeah. out our palates a little bit all right we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna put about you know, about 40 to 50 milliliters in there okay we'll set it on the scale tear it out uh, and then we'll pick a uh, tannin that we want to use um, would you like to use yours? Did, do you want to use mine? It doesn't matter to me. When we were texting about this, he said this would be more accessible than his tannins. <laughs> this is just regular, I think it's chestnut tannin. Yeah, something just, like that. So we're going to take this and we're going to measure out the gram. Nailed it. Nailed it. All right. Uh, it's important to put the vodka in first or the water in first because otherwise it's going to cake up on the bottom you're going to have a hell of a time mixing it up got it okay <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up to 100 milliliters okay okay we're going to take this put our hand on it shake it like it owes us money <laughs> You're going to be well seasoned afterward. <laughs> and then we pick a jar. I'm going to pour it in there. So this gives us a 1% solution of that tannin. Got it. Okay. Because it's one gram to 100 milliliters of liquid. Correct. Okay. And that is why the metric system is so valued all it's around so the planet. So easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we're going to make uh, our an acid. Okay. Right? Uh, so, you know, tartaric might be good or malic, what, whatever you feel like. It's whatever tartaric. You All right. So, now, uh, the acids I like to make in solutions of 10% just because I find that it takes more of the acid solution okay. to balance the mead than it does the tannin, right? Uh, so, the nice thing about the acid solutions is you can use the vodka if you want to. Uh, I found that 10% acid solutions are shelf stable on their own. That makes sense. Right. So we'll just, just take... Just like Starzan is an acid-based sanitizer, you're making a heavy acid solution. It makes it difficult for microbes to grow. Exactly. So are we going for 10 grams? 10 grams. Okay. 10% sure solution, 10 I have, grams. have my metric numbers correct. Spill a little there. All right, again, we take the cylinder, cover it, shake it like it owes us money. So this is good for like getting some of your pent up aggression out. Mm -hmm. And we'll pour it in there. Now, one thing that's kind of neat about making these solutions is you can get an idea of what these acid tastes like because a lot of people probably don't have, so you know, you can take a little sample of that, mm -hmm. put it on the back of your palm or whatever, give it a lick. Tastes like tartaric acid. <laughs> tastes like tartaric acid, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right, so do you want to do your mead? It's up to you. I, it feels like if you brought one from Corey, we should open it. <laughs> All right, let's do that. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is quite good, though. Oh, it's, 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 it's an excellent mead. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, I, you know, everything I've had from him has been fantastic, right? So now what we can do is... You know, I have a bunch of these little graduated uh, transfer pipettes. So, you know, you're probably not readily apparent on camera, but there's 0.5 milliliters, one mm. milliliter, two milliliters. And so we okay. can just do kind of a, a lazy trial. You okay. Know, we're just going to try to figure out. I'll let you do that then. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you, you can well, Mine doesn't have fancy marks on it. Well, I'll be. <laughs> brought an extra one right but right now we're not so much you know like you can sort of pay attention but I didn't measure the meat that goes that went in here we don't know how much is in here so knowing how much you're putting in there we're just trying to figure out will it benefit what it might need right okay so you know let's you know get some tannin let's squirt it in there give it a swirl give it a taste 
it's weird how that can change it so dramatically. Yeah. Just a couple of drops. Right. It's still quite sweet, but that tannin helps kind of, yeah. I don't know, sweep it, sweep it past a little bit better. Yeah, and you know, like we can also maybe try a little, try a little, a little more if you want. Mm-hmm. See, that, that, that's going to be a bit more balanced. Yeah, it's, it's wild how it just like, I guess it's, it kind of removes that cloying quality mm -hmm. of the of the sugars. Yeah, and then, you know, maybe we see if we might need a little bit of acid. So we squirt some in there. Maybe not quite so much as I put in, but. Mm -hmm. But the acid does help cut the, the sweetness fairly well. Yeah, so he, he told me what he did to balance it, which was he used Tannin Complex and Tannin Reach Extra. He did the maximum recommended dosage for each. Okay. So he had it a bunch, right? Okay. So now that we've determined, yeah, some, some Tannin, maybe a little of Acid, right? I'm just going to go ahead and... Bottoms up. Maybe let's go ahead and rinse out our glasses a little bit. So do you know what the dosing range is recommended for that on the packages? No, no idea. So my, my typical standard is one gram per gallon. Uh, that's what I start with whenever I'm doing balancing stuff. I buy this by the pound and it comes in kind yeah. of a weird unmarked package. <laughs> so one divided by 0 0.38 is 250 parts per million. Okay. Okay. So um, when we're when we're doing this balancing, it is easiest to do all of our math in parts per million, right? Which I think is one milligram in one liter of volume. I think you're correct. I think I'm correct, right? So um, and we'll probably put tables and all this kind of stuff down in the thing below, or maybe we'll link something. I, I'm, I'm trying to do things like like yeah, like, like up there <laughs> yeah. or down there. <laughs> Just, yeah, check the description. We'll make sure there are plenty of links uh, yeah. for for like follow-up okay. as you're studying this. Uh, but probably the most you know useful number to know is 0.38 grams per gallon. Yeah. Okay. okay. So 0.38 grams per gallon is 100 parts per million. Got it. Okay. Right? Now, that's also a useful number for doing your free SO2 additions, K-Meta. 0.38 grams of gallon adds 50 parts per million of free SO2. Okay. Right? Just useful numbers to know. So that way you're not, you know, necessarily adding too much because right. sometimes the package recommendation would be more than what is actually <laughs> Way, necessary. way too much. Yeah. Right? Which can lead to a flavor. So, uh, depending on how anal you want to be about this, I can say that, right? Yeah, I think that one's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can get like scientific grade pipettes, which when I first started doing this, I was super accurate and I had these gray pipettes and pipette pumps and all that kind of yeah. stuff and then I was just kind of like this is a lot of trouble so you can go on Amazon or whatever your favorite place to buy mm -hmm. random stuff is uh, and you can buy syringes right mm, yeah you know so what I've got here is a syringe that can take hold 60 um, milliliters or yeah 60 milliliters um, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that sucker we're gonna stick it into the mead and we're gonna draw up 50. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be super accurate. We're, we're, we're going to stick it in here. Got it. Right. Get another 50. Oops. That looks to be about 50. Okay. Good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to dose this one that's say, let's do 100 parts per million. Okay. And you said you usually use about 250 parts per million. So we'll dose this one at 300 parts per million. All right. Okay. So I've got a fancy little table uh, that Scott Labs sent me. Nice. Um, we will put a link to this one or uh, my version of it on the Reddit wiki. Okay. Uh, but what this has here is this says your target dosage, right? So if you look on here, you know, 10 parts per million, 20, 40, 50, 100. Right? That's so, handy. Right. And then it tells you how many milliliters of each thing to add if you want to target that based on your sample size. Okay. Right? So to target 100 parts per million in a 50 milliliter sample, we want to add half a milliliter of the tannin solution. Right? Got it. So um, 
you know, you can get little syringes or, you know, you can do it with these little pipettes if you want to. Um, I'll just do it with this because it's a little bit easier. This was tannin, right? Yes. So I'll draw some up. Okay, and then we'll take this one and we will put in, that's about half a minute, maybe one more drop. Okay, uh, to get 300 parts per million, we multiply that by three. So this one will get 1.5. So I'm just gonna start over at a, oops. Okay, so this one will get about, that's about 1.5 with the stuff that I spilled. Yeah. And we'll stick the rest back in there. All right, so let's get our little transfer pipettes and Put a, oh, I need to, I still have some water in my glass. Oh, yep. Just a few drops? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're just looking to. Get a taste. Get a taste, see where we are, right? So put a, put a couple of yeah. things in there, right? I think I like the higher tannin. Yeah. Now, do you think it might need to be more or less? It's starting to really hit the spot there. Yeah. How are you feeling? Um, you know, what I think it might be interesting to do, because I definitely like this one better, mm -hmm. is maybe we'll make a sample that's between these two. Okay, so and, 200. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and make one that's bigger. Okay. Right? So, um, we might need... <laughs> More glassware? <laughs> More glassware, we'll see. <laughs> you you, you want to have lots of jars, right? So to make um, our 150, or 200 rather, mm -hmm. right? We're just going to take half volume from this one, half volume from that oh, one. Equal parts. All right, so I'm just going to do 25 and 25. Okay. So we've got 100 parts per million. 200, 300. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe we could get one more, one more jar or one something. One more glass. <laughs> I probably should have warned you. We'll take a sample, it's 50 milliliters. And what do we say we're gonna do? Um, 400 parts per million, so that's 0.5 times four, so two milliliters. Uh, so I'll get my little guy here. Now, when we're done with this, I want to pour a sample of this and a sample of our perfect one and bring Mandy in All and right. have her tell us which one is better. And so where did I just squirt that here? Okay, so we're gonna squirt two mils in there. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, you know take some of this 200. I still think I might be in the, the 300 parts per million land. Yeah. So so you think you like 300 more than 400? Yeah, I think 400 is, is getting to that point where the tannin becomes kind of gritty. Okay. And I'm noticing it more than than I'm noticing the other subtler flavors. All right. It's it's hit me right at the front of my tongue now. Okay. So, you know, at this point, what we could do if we wanted to is we could make one between 400 and, and 300 mm. to really dial it in if we wanted to. We're kind of running low on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on meat, so why don't we just settle on 300 parts per milliliter? Okay. Okay. Which was this one. Yes. Okay. That one. Now, if we wanted to, we could do an, an, an acid bench trial, right? Yeah. I think we're running low. And I, I think the video's probably running long in the tooth, but I, yeah. I think that... I think that I think that the way we explain this should yeah. be yeah. pretty approachable. Yeah, I mean you just do the exact same thing except you would use a ten percent solution. Um, you'd do some math with this with this to figure out, you know, all that kind of parts per million. I can't do math in my head, but you multiply it by something and sure. you're good, right? Okay, let's mix it up and let's uh, rinse out glasses and get, get Mandy in here, see what she awesome. thinks.
So Will and I have done all of the balancing work, all the bench trialing, and we figured out what we believe is the perfect tannin balance for this mead. And now it's up to you, Mandy. No from pressure. Mandy from Favorite With Me, subscribe to her channel. Uh, She's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We've brought you in as our, as our ringer taster to tell us what you think, which one's better. Okay. One has been balanced, one is straight out of primary? Yeah, and, and sitting in my cellar for two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. Which one did you try? That was very tart. <laughs> this uh, this guy right here. Okay. So do you prefer your left hand or your right hand? The right one. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're a little nervous, huh? <laughs> well, you never know how somebody's palate's uh, yeah. gonna pick it up. Much smoother and much more pleasant. And this is, ooh. Do you feel like the, the sweetness is tempered down quite a bit in the sample that you preferred? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, taste it again. But, but you know, she, she also mentioned, you know, this one seemed much more tart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's also something that, that, you know, like if you've got a meat that's a little bit too acidic, if you got something that's a little bit too tart, right? Adding some tannins can really help sort of even that out. Yeah, this is so much more rounded and balanced and not as sharp <laughs> uh, and also not as sweet. Yeah. So it works. It works. It, it works. works. This is very, I, wow. Corey sent me to this knowing that it's not balanced. Right. right. right? This is not the type of thing that he would typically put into a bottle. Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> but it gave us an opportunity to play around with like putting some spit and polish on somebody else's already exceptional product. Right. And so thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Thanks, <laughs> so this has been probably the only video I'll ever doing do on bench trialing because it's, it, I feel like it's a really complex subject, but I feel like, Will, you did a great job of breaking it down to kind of uh, an el elementary level for someone like me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it feels like a complex subject, right? Mm -hmm. When I was figuring out this protocol, you know, I think I was talking to one of you, I don't know if it was on camera, but you know, like if you go and look for instructions on bench trial, it's, it's like, take five 375 milliliter bottles and add, you know, X amount of 10% solutions. Mm -hmm. Like what home brewer wants to sit right. it? You know, especially if you're doing one or two gallon batches. And so I really wanted to develop a protocol that just used 50 milliliter samples so that it's realistic for somebody to do mm -hmm. with a one or two gallon batch. Well, thank you both. Yeah. Uh, and like Will and I said, there will be links in the description so you can uh, do more follow-up study on this subject but i think this is a really great introduction to how to do this process just make sure you have a lot of pipettes and cylinders and glassware <laughs> <laughs> that is handy you can join us on discord on uh, the doing the most discord server uh, yep. will's fairly active on the mead hall discord discord server so you should check yep. that out as well as well as r slash mead great place, especially the wiki, to learn a lot of the more intermediate and advanced level techniques to improve your mead making. And you know, if you have questions, do not hesitate to tag me on the mead hall or on um, you know, the, the discord for doing the most or the man-made mead discord or send me a message on, on Reddit. I'm some variation of chef in all those places, <laughs> so I should be pretty easy to find. <laughs> hit, that, hit that at sign and start typing chef and you can probably find him. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Until next time, happy brewing. Happy happy bench trialing. Yeah. Maybe I'll start doing this. Yeah. And cheers. Cheers. I finished mine. It was good. <laughs> but cheers anyway. <laughs> <laughs>